like when I was like her, 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 her. The, 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 the intro king It's the powers, powers The almighty What's poppin' this your boy Mike Powers Back again This is a little bit of a different episode uh, With the recent dedication Of the street For the legendary Big Pun uh, Some controversy did arise it's been sparked on the on the internet for the past few days, as far as I could follow. People got in touch with me, wanted to know if I was in tune with it. Uh, I had a passing interest in it, as I did kind of follow what was going on. But as things did uh, heat up, I thought it might be a good time for me to reach out to Big Pun Sister, who you see on your screen right now on the left side. Uh, the beautiful Nicole Rodriguez has joined us to add some context to the stories that's currently flying around the internet, N Nikki. Did I call you Nikki or Nicole? Nick. Both, Nikki. Both are correct. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with Nikki. Nikki, Nikki Rodriguez. Thank you so much uh, for agreeing to this interview. Um, I, 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 I gather from the conversations that I've seen, the conversations surrounding um, Big Pun and his legacy and maybe a little bit of drama that's still out there, that's, that's still a thing at this time time it seems like um and aside from being pun sister let me just say this you you are your own person with your own identity right um you have three college degrees is that correct i'm i'm ha i'm working on my third one which i'll have the next year i will have a yeah and, the, and then the, until, then 2024 i'll have my fourth one i'll have my doctor my doctorates oh and and you're studying what Critical research. Wow. Okay. Are you 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 gonna be a doctor? In, in, in research. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's what I will I be did. a doctor. I'll, I'll, I will be doctor like Nikki Rodriguez. <laughs> I'd like the sound of it, and I wanted to get that out the way because um, even, even you're not an artist, a performer yourself, but uh, still, you know, uh, all of your conversations online have been about your brother, understandably so. But I think it needs to be kind of highlighted that you are indeed your own person. Um, and we probably get more into that a little bit later. So let's get right into what everybody's talking about right now. You've been very vocal uh, recently about protecting your brother's legacy and calling out people who haven't shown the support that Pund would have expected. Tell me why you're speaking out now. Um, I'm speaking out now in terms of the uh, cause of death for my brother or? Well, I, I know that the, the let's start with the dedication. Right. Okay. So the, the, mm -hmm. there was a street named after Pun um, in the Bronx. Am I right? Uh, yes. Fordham mm -hmm. Avenue. Okay. Um, Fordham. And uh, I, I, you, you brought up Remy's name, and I know Joe was J Lo. And J Lo. In fact, Joe didn't show up. Right. So let's. But start I, I never mentioned his name. But you it never was, mentioned uh, Remy and J Lo. Okay, no. got you. Thank you for the clarification. So mm -hmm. Remy and J Lo. Let's start with uh, Remy. You yes. would have expected her to be there. Is that correct? Correct. She did not show up. The reason up. I, she didn't show up. I was, I was expecting her to be there because um, not saying that she would have never made it. Cause I'm, I'm sure she would. She's a talented woman. Um, but the path that she took to this point, you know, my brother got her started on that path. And I just thought it was only um, right, you know, to at least show up and show some love and support. Um, you know, she did some time and I guarantee you of uh, my brother was still alive. He would have stayed communicated with her and took care of her because that's just that's his character, you know. So, you know, it was just disappointing. I, I really was expecting her. My mother was actually um, asking me. She was like, you know, she's there. So, so I said hello. And I was like, Ma, she never came, you know. So, yeah. And, and, and you you um, kind of allude to the fact that your brother uh, Pun had something to do with her ascension like he was helpful in her career can you be more specific about how he helped yeah you? yeah okay he recognized her talents and and presented her to joe you know so you know he made that connection got you okay and i'm assuming when your brother was alive him and remy was close yes yeah okay so that that, that, had, that had the has she, remy said anything about her absence no i haven't heard anything any reply no nothing and she no. hadn't reached and do you and her talk regularly at all or you have each other's numbers 
Oh no, personally, we we don't have any con any uh contact connection, but um, it's very easy. Uh, my Facebook is is open. Um, nowadays, you can get in contact with anyone very easily. And J Lo, so, um, mm -hmm. also missing. And what would you describe uh, Pun and J Lo's relationship before he passed? Sure. Um, he considered her like he just like Remy. He always said, you know, those are my sisters. So he, you know, presented them as a sister when he would describe them. And, uh, you know, not only that, but, you know, also her being Boricua, Spanish, from the Bronx, there was a connection there. You know, like the same story coming from nothing and making something out of it. So I was, again, shocked that she wasn't there on top of that, you know, also representing, you know, she's from the BX. Thought you'd have some more support, but again, there was no show. Let me ask you this on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, yes. all every. I see you talk about your brother in a very loving and protective way. Mm -hmm. Personally, when mm -hmm. J-Lo and Remy don't show up and your brother had referred to them as sisters mm -hmm. and you're his blood sister, how does that make you feel having them absent, knowing how your brother regarded them? It makes me, it's, I mean, it hurts because me as a sister, I, I know as, I know how far I'm, you know, I'm going to show my love for my brother, you know, he's not even here to see what I'm doing for him. So I kind of feel like, you know, with the love came loyalty. So he felt, you know, a love and loyalty towards them. And they could at least, you know, just come, even if it was for a second, even if it was just for, you know, come and say something, give a hug to us. But, you know, you didn't do anything. And to this day, there's no response, you know, even a YouTube's reaching out to the family, you know, saying something like I wasn't able to come. And the thing is that you don't need to explain anything to me in particular, because I'm I'm just a regular person. Yeah. Um, explain to the fans, explain to the people and just curious, you know, if, if there was a reason, just share it. Just say, you know, I wasn't able to because something important was, you know, I wasn't around. I was um, in another country filming or something, but the thing is that they don't even respond. They don't even say anything. So, um, so the street was named after him. Yeah. How important was that for his legacy and for his family? Oh my God, it was it was important. Well, at first, um, uh, Fordham Road in Grand Concourse wasn't the, the spot that that uh, we were initially going for. I initially started in 2010 trying to fight. Um, for a street name for him in Rogers Place. That's where like his murals are and they changed them up every few years. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going with the uh, community board, but it was a lot of work that I had to put through in building relationship with the community. I was living in Miami at the time. So it was very, very, very difficult. Um, but it was important for me then to do that because my brother had a, um, a close connection with the people around in the area, like his boys and, you know, so, um, you know, he's he's rhymed at that corner. So and that's also the place they decide to make the mural. So it was only appropriate that, you know what, let this be his the street, not the complete street, but at least that little section. Um, but it was denied uh, a, a few times. And then I put it at rest and then I received a phone call from Eliza, not a phone call, I'm sorry, a message on Facebook from Liza um, letting me know that she was going for the street name and would I, you know, want to come. Um, and I think what opened that door for me to talk to her is because there was a revelation through a DNA test that she's actually my cousin. And I had revealed that to her you talk about Liza a month before. And I, his wife, I just found out she's my cousin. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We, we, my, my brother and I have different fathers. So okay. it turns out, yeah, well, it turns out that she was related to me um, through my father's side, through Ancestry.com. So I reached out to her and I said, you know, I know we don't mess with each other, but you're my cousin. So I think that kind of like opened the door a little bit and maybe she felt like she can reach out to me about the wall, wall I mean, about the street name. And I was grateful for that. I thought it was her doing, you know, when I came, I, everything was neutral. Uh, you know, I thanked her and everything, um, but it actually turned out it, it was someone named Toby and uh, John Jackson who made that happen. So I'm assuming they chose that location because we also, although we grew up in Soundview, we also lived in Fordham Road, but for a very short time. But my brother used to always shop over there. 
all the time. So that's, that was like a signature spot too. So um, I guess they felt it was appropriate to, you know, try there and thank God it, it went through. Um, so th- there's issues. It looks like between yourself and Liza, um, mm-hmm. big puns, wife, widow. Um, mm-hmm. Did did you did I hear this correctly that you said that you thought she was um, she was waiting on Fat Joe at one point? She wanted to do harm to Fat Joe. She wanted to kill Fat Joe. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was waiting. She was waiting in the car in front of his house with uh, Nairi, my brother's other sister. From my brother has uh, two sisters and a brother from his father's side. So Nairi, who had uh, just kind of like um, reunited with my brother um, after many, many years not seeing him and began a relationship with Liza and they got very close. And she was with her um, waiting for Joe to come to take him out, but Joe never came home. So, you know, thank God, because I mean, he could have been dead. You, is it safe for me to ask you how you know this? Yeah, of course you could ask me. Um, in 2000, again, the, the, the time, the years might be wrong. It was like 2006, some, something like that. I remember the exact time, but I had linked up with Liza on the phone. And she, and uh, she, the thing about her, how can I say it? I, I sometimes wonder, does she think before she talks? Because she she spills a lot. And I and I don't think that she really like, says to herself, let me think before I let things out. So through the conversation, um, she was talking about the way Joe did her dirty and that she's going to get him and, you know, that she was out, not at that moment, but that she prior to was with Nairi outside his house, you know, to take him out because of the whole money thing, you know, before, you know, when she was trying to get money from him and he wasn't giving. So, you know, yeah. So that's how I know about that. To Mm -hmm. be clear, her intention was she was going to squeeze on Fat Joe herself. Yeah. And and I will take a light, and I would I would love to take a lie detector test that she told me, and I would love for her to take the lie detector test that she never told me that. I'll pay for it. Wow. Um. I would I would take one again. I would take one to you know to verify that she did tell me that, and I would. But at the same time, I want her to take one that she did tell me that, and I and I don't think. Me in my life, I would never lie about something like that. So obviously, it's true. You wouldn't lie that you're gonna <laughs> kill somebody. But she sat out there with with Nairi, his sister, um, who makes sure to stay out of the spotlight <laughs> um, to kill him. Do you do you know whether or not Joe knows about this? Um, I don't know if he knows, but I I know he knows now because um, I revealed that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and it's not about them. It's not picking sides, nothing like that. This is just factual stuff. This is what she said. Um, and I'm rather than keeping it in any much longer, I'm I'm saying it. <laughs> How long have you been holding on to this? I've been holding on to these things since since the time she told she told me. And in different during our twenty years, again, we didn't speak, but there was moments where we connected on the phone. And you know, for example, I was hoping that I can kind of get in the kid's life and things like that. And, you know, that would bring us conversating about, you know, I don't think the kids are ready to talk to you. And then we and her talking and then she just don't think and she'll say, you know, just like the other conversation, you know, Nicole, I don't know why you think I killed your brother. You know, I did try three times while he was sleeping, but I never pulled the trigger. Okay. And I said to myself, do you think, do you think before you talk, woman? <laughs> we, we, okay, now, so I, that was going. That was going to be my next question. Do you think uh, that she? Do you think that she ultimately has something to do with Big Pun's passing? Okay, before I answer that, I want to say I, I try to make it clear on every time I talk. I'm not saying that she did because, out of all fairness, there's I have no proof of that she did. So I cannot call her a killer, a murderer. I, I that would not be fair. I'm not doing that. What I'm saying is that. Ark, we, we are not connected. We do not talk because I initially told her, Liza, I know you killed my brother. And the reason I told that to her was a mixture of things. Um, um, when they first, when he first passed away, first of all, they were both together alone. 
Um, my niece and nephews, which I forgot to mention on the other interview, are always with Liza. Always, always, always. But but this day they weren't. All the kids were staying somewhere else. The kids are always with Liza. Always. So that that's another one thing that I've had to mention. So that that was kind of weird. So she she made this the situation was just her and him. Um, what I believe um may have happened is a, a few things. I'm thinking maybe he was a, about to have a you know a heart attack. And just like she mentioned, his mouth was full of drool. She and she admittedly said she did not give him CPR. But your failure, which is I find negligent, your failure to clean your husband's mouth out and then do CPR and could have saved him. He could have been here today if you would have just took, you know, that's my husband. I'm sucking everything out of your mouth and I'm going to give you CPR. Okay. I'm going to do, like I mentioned before, you can have crap in your mouth. I don't care. You're my husband. I'm going to save you. So that wasn't, that wasn't a, a, a good reason. This is out of her own mouth. This is from the, the, the in interview that she also mentioned that she was kind of relieved that he was gone, you know, and, and I really, really know that she believes that. Um, the other thing too, um, she was taking a long time to let, um, the other guys in, you know, the part of the, part of the clique that was in the other room, they're knocking, knocking, knocking. She's, she's taking her forever to open the door. This is what I'm told from, from the guys. Um, so my thing is that she either, or I'm, I'm assuming I, like maybe, uh, you know, for example, I work forensics, you could smother someone. It's not going to show you can cause someone to have a heart attack by smothering them. You could cause them to have a heart attack, okay? Um, also, two weeks before she passed away, she had uh, told my cousin, you know, through conversation, again, um, she doesn't really think for sure. She said, I guarantee you that he's not going to be here in two weeks. When you say the word guarantee, that, that means that you, you're, it's definite, it's going to happen. Rather than say, you know what, he or she's not looking good. I don't, I don't know if they're going to be here much longer that makes that sounds a little bit more realistic but when you say i guarantee you he's not gonna be here in two weeks and then also at that same occasion her cousin scorpio was researching in the computer um how to get rid of someone without it showing so you're you're guaranteeing that my brother's gonna pass away in two weeks your cousin is is searching in the computer ways to get rid of someone without it showing you know, you're alone with him. The kids are always with you, but all of a sudden they weren't there. You know, just the, just the day before you're, he's swimming and happy. It just don't make no sense. So, you know, too many, too many coincidences is what you're saying. Too many coincidences. And the thing is that people uh, within family, people were saying it amongst each other, but people were scared to say something, you know, like a scared, intimidated to say to her, um, this, you know, the same assumption or, or what have not, um, me have been eating me up inside ever since. And like I said, I told her immediately, you know, that, that she did. Um, then not only that, between then and now, she started admitting about the fat Joe situation where she was sitting to kill him outside, then admitting to putting a gun to my brother's head, which I would love to take a body detector test to, that she told me that, and also that she has one. I'll, I'll take a test for anything that I tell you guys, anything, anything. Anything. So, so um, she admitted to you that she tried to kill your brother three times. Yes, three different occasions. She said she put a gun to his head while he was sleeping, but she didn't shoot because she didn't want her kids to be without a father. My thing is, okay, let's say you did that on one occasion and you said to yourself, I don't want my kids to be without a father. Forget it. I'm not going to kill him. But you, you come another day and do it again. You just, you just told me three times. And then you come and do it again. Like that shows me that you really want him dead because she you tell you that she would she, she, she tell you why? No, only reason why is that she just just tired, uh, just tired. I, I didn't get no clear reason. Um, I didn't get no like no um explanation. It's just like I'm just tired of this shit, and you know, there's no there's no reason. She, she give no reason. And she 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 told you that she tried to kill Big Pun. Three times, but she, did she tell you she told in his you sleep. before or after he passed? Oh, after he's passed. This okay. is this is during this is during one of the times that we connected on the phone and having a little conversation. And then she asked me, you know, why do you still think I killed your brother? Because remember, I've been going back and forth with her for 20 years on this. 
So every time we link back up, she it's like she wants to get in my head. She wants to know where my mind's at. So she'll hear in there, out of nowhere, call me, get my information and, and say, you know, Nikki, I, don't, I just want to know, do you still think I killed your brother? And I wonder, like, why are you so worried? Why, you know, why are you so worried? Why don't you just take the lie detector test? I've been asking you for 20 years. If someone was accusing me 20 minutes straight, I'll say, I'll take it just so you could stop bothering me. She won't take it. But yet she was willing to take a lie detector test. And you could see one of her um, interviews on YouTube um, it, with the Fat Joe situation. She was willing about the money or what have not. She was willing to take a a, a, a lady had to test for that, but she won't take it to prove that she had nothing to do with my brother's death. And that's what makes it more suspicious. Why? I would like to clear my name. If I'm innocent, I would like to show you, listen, I didn't do it. I will show you, but she won't do it. She won't do it. She won't comment on it. She won't nothing. And that's what, that's what gets me. Yeah. You also said, forgive me if I cut you off, but you, you I believe you also said that Pun's wife slept mm -hmm. with his brother, cheated on yes. Pun with his brother mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. in their house. Yeah, in their house, and and the daughter and my niece even knew she liked him. Amanda, Amanda liked him. Vincent. Yep. And the funny thing is that before before I before I I even found out myself about the the affair, um, I you know I I was visiting one time and um. I saw Vincent was there, his brother and his sister Nairi. And I saw there was a lot of like touchy, touchy, touchy laughing, but that's it. I didn't see no, nothing like kissing or anything, but it just seemed a little bit too touchy, touchy. And I remember coming back to my mom and I was like, Ma, um, Liza and Vincent are like real whatever. So you kind of left it at that. So when she calls me in 98 to tell me, I was like, you know, what? You know, it was a joke. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I do you? remember she was. She told me, <laughs> she told me, and I'll take a lie detector test for that too. I'll take a lie detector test for everything that I, that I say, everything. Did, did, and but Pun didn't know about this. Well, there was someone in the background, uh, um, someone saying, talk to her, talk to her. You know, you need someone to talk to, talk to her. I thought it was my brother, but I actually, I don't know who that was. It was a, it was a male voice. So I don't know if it was a cousin or I don't know who it was. I assumed that it was my brother, but it it was it wasn't my brother. <laughs> so they were like, "Tell her, tell her." But now I think about it, it could have been Vincent. It could have been Vincent saying, "Tell her." I don't know. That would be a, that would only be an assumption. That wouldn't be fair. I, you, I don't want to. Did you say that she also cheated on Big Pun with other individuals as well? Yes, um, yes. Uh, prior to Vincent, she was she started an affair with the grocery store owner's son in Bronx River, like up the hill from her mom's house, um, the grocery store's owner's son. So she began a relationship with him and she was giving him money. She was, she was giving him money. She was also stashing money with her mother. Like uh, that's something I forgot to mention in the other interview because there's so much I've been holding in. It's like, I've been, I'm, I'm, everything's coming back, you know? Yeah. But at that time she was giving the guy money to stash, you know, like to go be with him. And also she was taking money from my brother and stashing it with her mother. So that's another thing. When she, my brother passed away, I don't know why she was that broke because her mother was stashing money for her for a very long time. And that she actually admitted to my mother. <laughs> so it's like, dude, this woman doesn't think when she talks or maybe um, she, oh, yeah. No, or maybe she thinks that it would, then I said to myself, well, maybe she talks so much because she doesn't think that it will come back at her, you know? But yeah, um, so in the in the song uh, "It's So Hard" mm -hmm. that was released um, after Pun's death, it, so he says in 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 the song, it's in like in the chorus part, right? Yeah, niggas want to smash my wife, niggas want to take my life. So that's just mm -hmm. not rapping, right? He had an awareness about. He had an awareness, yes. About yes. the stuff that was around him. Did he ever talk to you yes. about the, like something that had to do with a line like that? Like people want to kill me? No, no, he didn't, no, no. The most that I got from him was when I would sometimes be with him in the limo. He'll he wouldn't let me sit by the window. He was like, you know, I don't want to happen to you. You don't know if one of these people are here. Let me sit by the window. But stuff like that. But no, he never said 
anything like that. No, not there to me. The whole time, but everything that's going on right now, and the beef that you had, um, with with uh, his wife, uh-huh. and with with her admitting to you uh-huh. that she tried to kill your brother three times, mm-hmm. and that she was laying in wait for Fat Joe. Do you mm-hmm. ever? Are you ever in fear for your own life? Yes, I am. But um, I mentioned before that God forbid if anything ever would happen to me, that everyone remembers me from these videos and please look at her first. Because that that has been, that was one of the reasons why I didn't talk for a very long time because, um, you know, I know she's played like, you know, the victim role or what have not, but she's, 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 she's very cocky and she's very, um, she, from 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 my experience with the conversations, she's fully capable of murder. I'll tell you that right there. She's fully capable of murder. Um, so definitely, but to me, it's it's worth it. It's worth it. My brother's worth it. Um, I don't think um, you know, domestic violence is not acceptable. Him putting his hands on her is not acceptable. The domestic violence amongst the two was not acceptable. But I'll say it again, it does not give a pass. It doesn't, it doesn't say okay. This person did this to me. So you know what? Rather than call the authorities, I'm going to take him out myself. Or you know what? He's having a heart attack. You know what? Let me not call the EMS. Let me let him die. I want to make sure he's dead first. And then I'll get some help. You know, you don't do that. You don't do that. If Do it the right way. Christopher, that would be your nephew, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Extremely talented. Young man, very, um, very. Do you, do you have a relationship with him? Do you do you speak with him? I don't have a relationship with any of them because when I first confronted my sister in law, she was crying, and she told the kids, you know, I'm, why she's crying, which is your aunt thinks that I killed your father. Which I'm like, why are you gonna tell kid, uh, kids that? They were they were like five, six, and seven, and nine. Um, so for that reason according to her at the time, they didn't want to talk to me. And also on top of that, she's saying to stay away from her and her kids and what have not. So as the years gone by, um, I made an attempt um, and called and I said, you know, do the kids need anything? Do they need, um, you know, shoes, whatever my kid, you know, she'll say my kids don't need shit, you know, just real nasty. And like, okay, all right. Then I tried again a couple of years later again. Is Nikki? I'm just trying to reach the kids, and my niece answered one time, and she was like, "Don't you call here?" And, but I'm not mad at my niece because she right. was a kid, and she and she's just going by what she's told. Um, and then lies down on the phone and says, "My kids don't need nothing in in a nasty way." So I got tired of being rejected, and I just stopped. And you know, my mother would say, "You know, just leave it alone. One day they'll be 18, and they'll be able to on their own." Uh, look, which now they're no longer kids. They all adults, you know, they're like 27, 29, 31 in that range. Um, but they were raised by their mother. You know, they only know, they only know her side. They only know her story. Um, you know, they, they know the video that she shows constantly. Um, She shares it with the kids. So that's all they know. That's all they see. They don't see anything else, you know? Um, but again, when you asked about be my life in danger, definitely, especially with someone like her. She's 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 not she's not, and there's always something about her eyes to me. I don't know her her eyes to me just just creeps me out. Mm. Um, and I should just say that you know, if in the interest of a fair play, if anybody whose name is brought up in this particular interview wishes to come on and clear the air, the door is open. Please, I'm ready. Yes. I'm willing to have that conversation. Yes, it's only fair. Um, but again, I'm every platform that I'm on, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say it again, please to clear this up. I want to sleep at night. I want to, I want to be at peace. I want to be able to enjoy my brother's music. I want to just be, I want him to, to be at rest. Cause I don't feel my brother's at rest. Just have the lie detector test already, Liza. Just do it already. If you did nothing wrong, if you had nothing to do at all with his death, just clear it. It's been too long. Clear it. I'm paying for it. Please. Um, you know, that that's all that needs to be done. I, 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 you know, and if you want to, I don't mind. I'll take one for everything that you ask. I'm sorry, everything that I need you to clear. I'll take one for everything that I said that you told me. I'm d- totally down for it. I, I give you okay. 
but okay. she don't she don't answer. Um, and let's just make sure we clear on this. You got no beef with Fat Joe. You and Fat Joe have a cordial relationship. Is that correct? Yeah, we have a cordial relationship. We yeah, we're not we don't talk on the phone or we're not friends. No, it's one of the things if I bumped into him, which I think has been only three times, four times the most since my brother died, it, it was all love. Yeah. But it, there's nothing more than that. I mean, we don't we don't talk on the phone or anything, you know? Okay. And I just wanted to make sure I cleared that up. So in, 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 sure. in the video um for It's So Hard, it's a lot of outpouring of support, right? In that video for from celebrities. So you have Puff oh, and yeah. Again, J Lo, Wyclef was in there, Lil Kim, Nas, all of that. Let me ask you this: After his death, did real life look anything like that video in terms of the support from the celebrity community? Oh my God, no! And the crazy thing is, at the funeral, so many and um were saying things, especially to my mom, like, um, you know, I'll check on you sometimes. What's your number? I'm gonna call you. No, nobody called. Nobody checked. Nothing like that. You know, so it's like just all all talk. And speaking of the speaking of the funeral, another thing that um, I forgot to mention before that um, came to me was the day of the funeral. I understand that everyone grieves different. You know, I understand that everybody. You know, period. We're different people. We don't do things the same. But man, you've been with your husband that long. You didn't shed one tear. She didn't shed one tear. She she looked like whoo. Finally, he's gone. That was that's that was like that's that was the persona, and that was the talks amongst each other there to people. They're like, "Why Liza doesn't, you know, why Liza doesn't look like she's this?" And so everyone noticed that, you know. The only time that I saw any emotion, the only time that we saw, sorry, we saw any emotion was actually smiling because a few of the celebrities that were there were passing her checks, you know, giving her money. Like little Kim gave her a check. You know, different artists were giving her checks. So she was like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that was the only emotion that was expressed. And I think it was happy she was getting some money, you know. But, I mean, my husband, listen, I was married before. And my husband was, uh, was uh, how you say, very verbally abusive, okay. Um, and that was, was difficult because I grew up a lot of verbal abuse. And now I'm, I'm married to someone who verbally abuses. So that was a very difficult thing for me. And um, I asked for divorce and I left him. But even with him, when he treated me, if God forbid he were to die, I'm going to cry. I'm going to, or if I don't, you know, I'm going to hold him. I'm going to do something because no matter what, you had a connection. You have a, you have children together. She didn't show anything. All she did was strut around like, finally, this dude is gone. I can live my life. So when I say about her not helping him, her not intervening to help him was because she was tired of cleaning up after him. She was tired, you know, tired of the, the domestic abuse, tired of the cleaning up after him, tired of everything. She was tired of it. And her, to me, that, that was her answer. Let me, let me let him die. Maybe that's a better way to put it. I'm going to let him die. And you said that was the vibe at the funeral. Other people kind of felt that they saw yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, like uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, like your family talks to each other. So everybody's talking to each other. Like, do you see her? Do you, do you, do you notice that? Do you see her? You know? So, yeah, it was very noticeable. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Do you have, it's a weird question to bring up in the middle of this conversation. But because okay. I was preparing for this interview, I just wanted to know the answer to this. I feel like sure. the people that follow my channel might want to know this too. Do you or anyone else possess unreleased pun songs or verses, even from before he was famous, like a demo? No, Liza has them. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those has she ever released any of those, or she just you think she's holding on to them? Yeah, that, that's yeah, that she's she's holding on to them. Mm -hmm. Um, how much of a toll is this whole thing taking on you right now? And I'm speaking of the fact that your brother was such a large in life figure. <laughs> who is still beloved around the world, um, that reminder daily, how difficult is that for you to reconcile as you go on with your real life? Like the, this, the shadow that he leaves. It's, it's very difficult. Um, I've never, never healed. I'm still mourning my brother. I think I would deal with his death better if it was convincing that it was, you know, um, natural causes. 
um, because I don't feel that's the case. Um, makes it very difficult. For example, when I went to the street naming the other day, I'm listening to the different people talk, you know, like the uh, community board members and talking and things like that. And they're saying, you know, we have here Big Pun. Big Pun was, you know, and they're introducing him and saying that, you know, who who died of natural causes on November 10th. And I'm and I'm listening. I'm, I'm saying to myself, no, I know he did not. Mm. You know, so it, it bothers me when I when I when I see that or I hear it because that's what's pushing me to say no. Twenty years is a very long time to be asking this woman for a license to test and her not want to do it. I cannot sleep well. I'm constantly thinking and thinking and thinking and 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 remembering things that she says and saying to myself, "Oh my God, she's getting away with it." You know, it, it's just so hard to have peace. It's so hard to have peace, and then it's hurting. Other people, the family, the ones that are afraid to speak up because of what you mentioned, fear of retaliation and death. So it's like I'm the voice for them. It's like they, they're talking to me. They're talking through me. You know, when you, when you talk to them, please let them remind them about this and tell them about this, you know, because they're afraid to show their face. Yeah. Um, but but I'm not I'm not at all. Um, and I feel that, you know, the answer, the truth needs to be told to the family and to the fans too, because there's a lot of fans that loved him just like a family member. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, we, and we're real people. He was a real person with real problems, just like anybody else. You know what I mean? Doesn't give anybody no right to say, I, I don't want to uh, save you. I'm, I'm not going to help save you. What, what did you learn from your brother? Um, what did you learn from what your brother went through in the industry mm -hmm. and as well as with his wife? What lessons did you take away from all of that that he went through as you the, as you think about it later on now? The lesson I learned is don't trust nobody. And not everybody's loyal. Not yeah. everybody, not, not everybody's loyal. You might give it, but you're not gonna get it. But not to trust nobody. Don't trust nobody. And that 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 idea was solidified in your mind after seeing everything that your brother went through. Absolutely, absolutely. Everything changes overnight when when the when the man with the person with the money's gone, the celebrity's gone. Everybody goes from kind of like the kind of like the uh, MC Hammer story. One day you're very important, and the next day it's like I don't know you. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. Until they so, see Hammer in a commercial, then they probably find his number and call him up. <laughs> yeah, know? that's 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 why that's why I always said to myself, I'm gonna go to school because, for example, I love music myself. You know, when I was younger, I was just very shy. That was my problem. Um, I'm, I'm not a rapper, even though they were trying to make me a rapper because they felt that I would be, I would be marketable. I mean, it was just a hot mess. I hated, <laughs> I hated it. But I do sing, but but that's not my calling, and that's um, I don't like the life. I don't like this life. I don't like this uh, celebrity life. I like I like a regular life. You know, regular husband, regular man. I just I don't like all this uh, celebrity stuff. I don't. Okay. Um... I, I wanted. I have a question written here, but I think I already know the answer, so I shouldn't ask it. But the the question is: Is there any way for there to be a resolution between you and Liza? Absolutely. Lie detector. Get a lie detector test, and that's it. And if for some reason you pass, which I really doubt you are, but if say you did, I will be glad to go on air to in front of everybody and and say I'm so sorry. I have no problem because I'm a grown woman and I and, and I don't mind doing that. I don't think that's going to be out the outcome because I feel that she had something to do with it. She had something to do with it. She didn't she she didn't intervene to try to save him. She let him die. Mm. 